ebyo bufuzi ebye mfuno edini enono nebyo buwangu byonna bisange wanoku olutimbe tv olutimbe tv bi informed Okay, kwa ni liza kwa mkwaro kwa ngampuri liza Kuru Timbe TV Uruna Kuru Adero Mkubuza kwa tuwa suze yote mkwano Kwa gena masu na ukule vikanti otumbura Mkasera kano Njagara kwa ni liza kwa mwena mkwano janga Basi zira mkwanga ya Uganda Njagara kwa liza kwa No kwa ni liza kwa mwena basi zira mkwanga Aginja uro Na daranga msi zira mchondo cha wabu mkwano jange Na mwena ba gena masu na ukusi zira Musema zinga waburaya Uruna Kuru Adero Njagara kuongera kwebaza gwagena maso entakira no subscribinga gwagena maso no kwebi kanti o sharinga na wagena maso no kwebi kanti o likinga no commentinga Njagara kutegeza nti urunako rwalero mukwano gwanga mpuliriza nzikiriza nsoke nkutuseko ebigambo bino nzikiriza nsoke nkutuseko ebigambo bino ebize byogerwa mwami kyaguranyi sentamu enfunde ziwera um, ku mikoro ne mumbera ezenja uro Mkwano kwa ngampuliriza okusinzira monsengeka Njagara kutegeza nti minobie bigambo ebi viride kumwa michaguranyi Munda mugwanga Uganda no kwe torolesio na Okure bikanti ayongiro kuganja No kure bikanti ayongiro kwa agarua Aba antwa benja uro mkwano kwa ngampuliriza Nsabo ulirize burunji Nsabo gubelele burunji Mkwano kwa ngampuliriza Thank you. I want to Nenda kala pate kesa tindi mwete kesa kubero mwaku kubamba nyi Okubero msanyi mfunga ni mwete kwa kani mwaku Ni mwete kesa kubero kufa Okulama ni kwanga ya te Habana wa penaba zukuru Kana wadi ya kani yami Well, my message to them is this You are traitors You have betrayed your country You have sold your conscience for cheap History will judge you very harshly You should remember that it is your children and your children's children who will inherit this mess that you have created. You should individually reflect on what you have just done. Remember that there will be a time when you must account for this nonsense. Today most of you who put up your hands to support this resolution, you have put your names on the national wall of shame. You should think about how you want to be remembered. We must make the pledge that we shall not allow this amendment to pass. Article number one of our constitution says all power belongs to the people. We are the people. If this constitution is amended today, we shall have ourselves and only ourselves to blame for eternity. Twenty or even thirty years from now, President Museven will be asking for more terms in office and you will be perhaps on your sick bed or dead. And if you're still living, you will be living in these suppressive and oppressive conditions. At that time, you will look back and wish you did something today. My brothers and sisters, we must defend the constitution before it is too weak to defend us. Now let me, let's try this one. I'm hoping I see the word. When I say people power, you say our power. How can you people power in your our power? And then I say our power. Till the time has come, when we must come in and do what we must do. I 
I come to Arua today because we have won that war in Chadondo. Because we won that war in Jinja. Because we won that war in Rukunjiri. Because we won that war in Bujiri. And because we must win this war in Arua. Secondly, uh, you see, Nelson Mandela embodied almost all qualities of good leadership. Democracy, unity, rule of law, and he did he bore them at heart, not just in rhetoric, because we are looking at a leader who, after suffering in jail for 27 years, still did not have a sense of entitlement. He's a leader who came, became president and served only one term. And uh, he saw it, that it was not about himself, but the nation. And indeed, he stepped down from the office of presidency and uh, gave chance for the younger generations to take control and contribute to their country as the elder leaders were offering guidance and advice. And I think um, still Nelson Mandela exhibited this servant leadership. We can recall from his inaugural speech when he said, I stand before you not as a prophet, but as a humble servant of the people. Thank you very so, much. Um, so. Thank you very much, Verona. Uh, although I don't understand what you term as political phrases, I still thank you for this opportunity, Verona. Your Honor, having heard from all the submissions under these abnormal circumstances, I want to emphasize what I say, that it is not me on trial, Your Honor. It is the court itself on trial. And Your Honor, no matter what you decide in that court, whatever you decide, Your Honor, that is not my business. My business is standing for the truth. My business is standing for what is morally right. My business, Your Honor, is standing for what is morally beneficial to you, to me, to those people that are persecuting me under the guise of prosecution and to all the people of Uganda. And Your Honor, if standing for what is right, if standing for truth is going to earn me my freedom, I will thank God for it. But Your Honor, if standing for what is right is going to keep me in this prison, then I will thank God even louder. After all, I have a lot of work to do even here in prison. <laughs> First of all, yes, we are expecting elections and uh, if it was uh, business as usual, President Museven would be expected to rig the elections using the military as usual. However, um, our entry as the young people of Uganda is a breath of fresh air because we are the majority. We are over 85% of the population and that is not enough. Even the elders are with us and uh, indeed the people of Uganda are more united than ever before. So yes, I've said it before and I'm saying it now that my team and I are seriously considering challenging President Museveni in the next presidential elections and that's less than two years away. <laughs> I take this opportunity to also announce that we, what we are witnessing right now is the launch of a very critical phase in our struggle to liberate ourselves from a dictatorship which has crippled our country for almost four decades. A dictatorship which has strangled our economy with a massive corruption, patronage, high cost of living, a sick health care system, a broken down health care system, etc, etc. For a very long time now, 
We have lamented and cried about the government which works for only the few and excludes the majority. Well, today we close the book of lamentation and open the book of acts. Finally, to all the Ugandans out there in Uganda and abroad, we rally you not to treat this as an ordinary election, but as a revolutionary election. The stakes are high. The, tra the transition is in our face. Freedom is staring us in the face, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. The time is now. And we have entered the ring. I say we have entered the ring and we are not coming out. We only await to raise our fist in victory. Because this is the time, ladies and gentlemen. Because he has distinguished himself as an excellent violator of human rights who has no respect whatsoever for human life and human dignity. And fourth, we ask you to support our demands for accountability for the crimes against humanity that he has committed and continues to commit against the people of Uganda. Now, for far too long, the Western world has believed that allowing dictators to hold their nations hostage is an unacceptable cost for perceived security. Leaders who tolerate dictators and treat them as legitimate partners are complicit in their crimes. Please do not be partners in crime. Do not sacrifice your moral obligation. Do not sacrifice your moral obligation for short-time convenience. Please stand on the right side of history. Thank you for the opportunity you gave me to speak to you and this honorable court. Your Honor, I'm confident because indeed it's not me on trial in this court. It is the court itself on trial. Because I have not committed any crime, as my lawyers explained, I'm only here because I disagree with the political leadership of this country, and in particular, President Museveni. But my spirit is confident, Your Honor, because I am here not because I've stolen public funds or I've killed somebody. I am glad that I'm here because I'm fighting for them, for you, Your Honor, for everybody in this country. I'm here for protesting against unfair taxation and against injustice. So if I'm to go through this oppression and pain, Your Honor, for the betterment of my country, so be it. At least I know that history will absorb me. I thank you. So now that we are here, ladies and gentlemen, let's capitalize on that unity. Let's build on that unity. Fellow leaders, let us put country before self, like General Mundo always guides us. Our country should be bigger than us, and the pain of our people, if there's nothing, that should unite us, ladies and gentlemen. As I conclude, I want to ask us to stick to the values and not sell out. I'll say that again, let us stick to the values and not sell out. Besides using violence, General Museveni buys our people. You've seen leaders that once upon a time respected selling out. So the pain of our people should guide us to know that a lot of sacrifice has been made. And let us just return the favor by standing by those values for which we convince them to get into that trouble and they are still standing. Change our destiny. He 
if we only come to it, now we can sing along, sing along. In my country, in 1986, a man emerged out of a five-year long guerrilla war. That war claimed more than half a million lives of our people. That young cattle keeper turned soldier stood on the footsteps of our parliament and promised nothing but a fundamental change in the politics of our country. He promised to preside over a country based on the principles of unity, democracy, equality and social justice. He said that Africa's problem was not the people but leaders that overstay in power. As we gather here today, ladies and gentlemen, President Museveni has been in power for 33 years and is showing no sign of quitting. Another betrayal of dreams. Madam Speaker, I am not sure how many more times I will have the opportunity to address this parliament as a member of parliament. Hopefully the next time I address this parliament, I will be president. <laughs> but I want to remind all of us, honorable members, that we can choose either to be seen as a parliament that does not care about the people or to be seen as a parliament that is indeed elected into these positions to stand and protect the rights of our people. I thank you, Madam Speaker. President Museveni Agamba ya ina vision yuka ya hii gensoroye ya kona jaluana monsiko kubanga tu ina syndrome yu mzungu wa jita individualism tu ina embera yu egama tinu omuntu omu ya yagalo kuhuninga struggle mchamu mbu masibu ni manyamu Waganda wafima mama, wafima tata, wafima emituwalu ama kumi atano Ni maafa Ni wangu wade, wala gana, ujiru kukunaizinga, nga jeno saini Ulumani mwale miaka, ama kumi asatu kumetano Nze kama kongira, na wangu la musebe ni, mkarunuko wa krizi Tepunamu ya chikango jona, ejiba eliba kate mafe, abatuwala, mundini, nemunonu Naye, mani chipe tuta agenda maso teka na kasi disi, jamu shi kama agenda kudi na dala ngai yolo mbusu kuchivalama, ni mama ni mama na mama mani, ni yako lomba juu kisa wakati mukoe wambi kama kati mafe. The silence might be the convenient option. Oksika, utani yoke na kuhu, chini zoko kwa kati chipe wewe mimi mimi. Nae chote chia agenda maso, pako lomba na nani na mui, uba na na kama mui. Hai, mombe, lete chisa nilizo, lete chisa nilizo Hei, ya tuwe na limu saizi Kanea ene chai ya hindi Iwa, lese, lete ya kusala ya maru hindi ya mwa Bie na? Eee, kukatuwa wawo Nengo nyimenye wa nange Alali Nengo waliwe bagamba Waliwe njiwa waliwe Ready for parliament 
Tulombe. <tos> Very good. 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 Very good.